Welcome to South Point. We're so glad you're here. So when Christ really is the center and core of your family life, you're going to you're going to do better. Why? Because you're going to treat each other better. You're going to be more Christ-like. Life can feel like a race sometimes. There's this push to get closer to the one who loves us. And even though we know where we're going, the race is not always easy. It's not always painless. It's filled with lessons that we can learn from. But when we finish this race called life, we can't forget what set us off in the first place. Whether you're new to South Point, or have been here for years, everyone needs to know what's next. We are always taking a next first step. Spend a couple of hours with us, have some food, learn what we're about, and let us help you connect more with God and others. All you need is take the first step and sign up. Our church is a light in the darkness, a city on a hill. Every believer is called to make a difference in the world, to love God completely, and to make disciples of every nation. But in this busy, mobile, noisy world, it can be difficult to even do the basics, to pray, to read the Word, to bring the love of God to our marriages, families, neighbors, and coworkers. We know you're here because you want to be a part of God's mission on the earth. You want to experience the abundant life that Scripture talks about. You're looking to connect your faith to every part of your life, every day of the week. That's why our church is subscribing to Right Now Media and making it available for free to every member of our church. You'll have access to over 10,000 online Bible study videos on parenting, marriage, finance, discipleship, leadership, and many more. The videos can be used in Bible study groups or for personal devotion. There's also a huge library of safe biblical kids videos. We'd love to see every member of our church utilizing Right Now Media. Small group leaders leading their adult or youth groups through engaging Bible study series. Children enjoying safe programming that doesn't just entertain, but helps lay a strong spiritual foundation. Families spending quality time together going through devotional Bible studies. Couples using biblical studies on marriage, parenting, and finance, applying God's word to every area of their lives. There is something for everyone. We wanna help you grow as a disciple of Christ, and we wanna help you become a disciple maker in your home, your school, your workplace, your neighborhood, in whatever mission field God has called you to. We believe that this free resource will help equip and unleash you to live out your faith in every area of life, to experience God-centered, abundant life, not just on Sundays, but every day. We are for you, and God is for you. He wants to empower you every day to live for Him. Together, we can be a light in the darkness, a city on a hill,
Welcome to South Point. We're so glad you're here. and core of your family life, you're going you're gonna to do better. Why? Because you're going to treat each other better. You're going to be more Christ-like. Good morning, South Point. It is great to see you all today. Uh, would you please stand and uh, sing this song to our God with us? Lay them at his feet. Sing that with me. All the worries of this world, I will lay them at your feet. Surrender every anxious thought for perfect peace. Your perfect peace. All the loved ones I hold dear All my hopes and dreams and all my fears I will choose to trust your name In everything, in everything I will look up for there none above you I will bow down to tell you that I need you Jesus Lord of all Jesus Lord of all I will take you at your word Jesus, you have taken hold of me. All my life is in your hands. You are my strength. You are my strength. I will look up. I will look up. For there is none above you. I will bow down to tell you that I need you. Jesus, Lord of all, I will look back and see that 
that you are faithful I will go ahead and believe in you are able Jesus Lord of all Jesus Lord of all He is the Prince of Peace the perfect healer the King of Kings and the mighty Savior we're going to sing about that. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Perfect healer. All my life. All my cares on you, King of Kings, mighty Savior. All my life, all my cares on you, Prince of Peace, perfect healer. All my life, all my cares on you. King of kings, mighty savior, all my life, all my cares on you, all my cares on you. Church, I will look up, sing aloud. I will look up, for there is none above you. I will bow down to tell you that I need you, Jesus, Lord of all. I will look back and see that you are faithful. I look ahead, believing you are able, Jesus, Lord of all, Jesus, Lord of all. Come on, church, one more, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord of all. God, you all sounded awesome out there. Y'all can have a seat. Hey, good morning. My name is Brandon, and I'm grateful that you guys came to worship God today, and that we're just blessed to be able to worship God in this building each Sunday. Uh, I really, really love that. Um, well, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about rules. It'll be part of the, the sermon, and uh, I... Sometimes I don't like to be told what to do. Um, my wife says that I'm stubborn. I hear it's a synonym for charming. And I agree. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I don't really like being told what to do sometimes, but what I really don't like is when I find myself in a situation and I don't know the rules, when I, when I don't know what to do. That's so much worse. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and dive in deeper. Those moments where it, it makes you say, um, because you're not sure what to do. So we're in week three of that series. Mark will unload that a little bit later on. But uh, if I could, uh, I would love for you guys to fill out your connection card. Uh, let us know that you're here. Help get better connected. in. Uh, there's several ways for you to do that. If you have the South Point app, it's the South Point Church Downriver. You can download that on Apple or Android. Also, you can take your phone, scan the QR code that's on the screen. Uh, you can connect to the public Wi-Fi. Go to wifi.southpointccc.com. It'll redirect you there. You can fill out your connection card there. Or uh, on your way in or out, you can grab a uh, physical connection card there. Um, for those of you that are new, thank you for being here. We're glad that you're here with us today. Our ask for you is that if you would please, after service, go out to the point. And uh, let us know that you are new and that you're here. We would love to have a little talk with you, answer any questions that you might have, and a thank you for going and taking that step 
uh, will donate five dollars to the, the Detroit Rescue Mission. They help the homeless and the poor in the Detroit area. Um, but just please go take that step if you're new. We would love to know who you are. Uh, some upcoming events. So with the holiday season here, with Thanksgiving approaching, it's getting cold. Um, Christmas, there's some needs. So our open arm food pantry. Uh, so we have a food pantry that's here year round helping the community, making sure that people have the food to eat and feed their kids. Um, we're doing a, uh, a partnership with Myers, so we're doing a double match um, with some donations there. It's the Myers Simply Give promotion. So there's more information about that out in the lobby or at the point, so please go check that out. Also, we have the Gift It With Love program, so making sure that every South Point family uh, has what they need for Christmas dinner and some gifts for their children. Uh, so whether you want to help donate to be a part of that, um, maybe the, you're in need, there's several ways to get involved or learn more. You could text the GIFT to 734-890-5454. And we'll also be partnering uh, with the Beaumont Center to help uh, families that have children with developmental disabilities, just helping them have a good Christmas and help support them. Um, part of our worship service is to give, to give back to a God that's given us so much. So there's several ways to give. Uh, you can give through the South Point app. You can connect to, through the website. You can mail it in. There's boxes in the back. Um, but if you're new here at South Point, we're just glad that you're here. N feel no obligation to give. No worries about that. But if you call South Point home, please partner with us in our mission to win Down River to Christ. And speaking of that, we're making uh, big gains uh, here in Down River. Uh, if you use push pay to give, we're going to be stopping using that soon, so please transition to one of our other ways to give. Um, and last week, or actually over the last two weeks, we have a pro program we partner with, Go Impact 360, so we do the Go Serve. And so over 100 families were impacted here in Down River, very grateful about that. And um, two people gave their life to Jesus, were baptized, and we love to see that life change. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are. You are great. Lord, I pray that uh, I'm just thankful that we could worship you today. Thankful that you are God that loved us so much that you would die for us, that we could have a future. Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with us today. You accept our worship and our gifts and offerings would build your kingdom. Love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So this, uh, this next song was uh, something that was one of the songs I was playing on my way home from work last week. And it was, uh, it was one of those days where it just seemed like everything was testing me. You guys know those days, right? Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the things about being a Christian and, and really living life in general is that the, the enemy is going to be attacking us no matter what, what's going on in your life. You could be doing great with your, your faith. You could be having troubles, be in a valley, building. No matter what, the enemy is going to find the, the, the worst time to, to attack. And... I wanted to read part of this song because I, I find that a lot of solace in this bridge right here. So there's no shadow you won't light up. There's mount, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. And there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down coming after me. I and mean, those are some big words right there. Those are some big words. And that's something that when you are being attacked by the enemy and when you are hiding, you are scared, you can listen to this song and, and really take peace in it because there's something powerful about it. So would you guys please stand and sing this song with us? spoke a word you were singing over me you've been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathe your life in me you've been so so kind to me Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it 
chases me down, fights till I found leaves and nine and nine. I couldn't learn, I don't deserve. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. I was your foe I was your foe Still your love far from me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worth You paid it all for me You have been so, so kind to me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I found leaves of nine and nine I couldn't learn, I don't deserve Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till i found leaves and nine to nine I couldn't earn, I don't deserve Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending Reckless love of God sound of his voice seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken from our regard and through it all through it all 
My eyes are on you Through it all Through it all it is well Through it all Through it all My eyes are on you And it is well With me Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Through it all, through it all my eyes are on you Through it all, through it all it is well Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And it is well It is well So let go my soul and trust and when still know his name so let go my soul and trust in them the ways and when still know his name so let go my soul and trust in them the ways and when name the ways and when still know his name
And through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well with me. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Savior. We love you. You all can be seated. Sorry, there's a very, uh, there's a real contrast between that last song and that moment right there. So it takes a while for my brain to kind of go between the two. But um, uh, that song, it's really not in the message, but what a perfectly placed song. But I'm Mark. What's up, everybody online, everybody here in person? I'm Mark. Uh, I'm glad you were here, especially if this is your first time. Welcome to South Point, man. Um, I think we got something for you today. So I hope you enjoy. But that song, like it's, there's an old, the, the original, like it is well, it's, like, it's, it's an ancient one. It's, it goes back a long, 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 long time. When I was a kid, I remember hearing that song, and I didn't really care about it back then, but um, you're Michigan people, right? And so Michigan people love their water, right? Because that's what you got. You got water, right? And so it's a water song. So it, it's about waves, right? There's waves, and, and you're, when you're in these massive waves, you can be in the middle of these massive waves being afraid because you think you're going to capsize, you're going to die, right? You're going to drown. So these waves that are surrounding you create fear because you think the waves dictate your future, right? And we all have that with life. The guy who wrote this song was in the middle of that in his life. Wouldn't it be amazing if even though you were in the middle of massive waves in life, you could still confidently say that phrase that's repeated over and over in that song, like a centering song, it is well. Like it's well with my soul. As sometimes we don't think it's possible. Once we get past this wave, maybe, once we get rid of, once they calm, but it doesn't say that. I, I th- we just... Man, we just notice all the differences between us. Like, you, you're probably here thinking you're different than everybody, and you look at all the people, and they're this, and they're that. You know, you look at the outside stuff that we can see, or the bank accounts, or what we do, where we're from, and we just see that we're different. A song is a reminder that, no, we're not. Man, we are so much alike, it's scary, because every single one of us has waves, you know? And we get afraid, we get angry, we get whatever, and we... And we really think the things around us determine who we are in our future. And and we get caught up and we just get scared and we don't know what to do. And this series, what a perfect, again, it's a song for this series because this series is called Um, right? This We've all been in this moment. I bet some of you right now are in an um moment. Like those moments in life where you either like physically say out loud or in your brain, you're saying, um, (laughs) I got no clue what to do right now, you know? I'm in there so many times, like, I just don't know what to do right now. And we look back in those moments in our lives, and if we're honest, we know that we have made some very bad decisions. That whether, maybe in the moment other people were causing pain, but we made decisions that definitely caused pain in our lives and others. We wish we could go back and change those decisions. Sometimes we wish we can get rid of um moments, but what we've learned so far in the series is we can't get really can't get rid of um moments. All of them they come, right? It's okay to have some um moments in life to not know what to do. But maybe just maybe we can be better prepared for them the next time they come. Maybe just maybe we don't have to repeat what we've done in the past. Maybe there's a better way to respond, be prepared and in the moment to make wiser decisions that lead to less pain, more life, <laughs> less death. Because I bet if you keep doing the same old thing that you've been doing, you might get the same things, but we're wanting different results. 
Maybe there's something better. Maybe there's something different. And that's what this series is. We really want better for you. And I mean, because I think all of us would say, man, these moments, I just don't know what to do. I don't even know how to figure out what to do. So step one, week one, we said was pause and admit my need for help. Like in the moment, like literally pause because don't send the email. Don't say the word. Don't react. Don't, don't do that. White, that. In the moment, just pause for a second. Pause. And in the pause, admit that I need help. It's okay. You need help. Week two, we learn to seek wisdom, not just more knowledge, not just a solution, more solutions to the, to the, to the thing that I'm facing this very moment. Because if we get too focused on this very moment, I oftentimes just make bad decisions. And that's not what wisdom is. Wisdom protects. Wisdom keeps the future in focus. Wisdom gives me a better way. So, don't, so go after wisdom. If you missed any of those messages, I really encourage you to go back and watch them online or listen to the podcast because they really build upon each other. And that's what leads us to today. And to kind of this topic of today, I got to I just wrapped myself out a little bit. When my oldest son, Kern, was, uh, he got his first phone. I think he was like 16. And he got, you know, this is predates Apple kind of phones. He's got like a, we would call them dumb phones, right? Or whatever they're called, not smartphones, just a phone. And um, he got this phone. And so I don't remember if it was when we gave it to him or soon after. Anyways, we, we established this rule, like, hey, no phone calls after 9 p.m., right? Whatever, we made this kind of rule, no, no phone calls of 9, 9 p.m. And then at some point, I don't remember how quickly it was, but it's at some point he said, he began to question the rule, like, wait a minute. So I can make a phone call at 8.58, but I can't make a phone call at 9.04? <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's what the rule is, right? Duh. <laughs> so, uh, like, well, why, Dad? And, you know, not being a jerk about it, he was honestly asking a question. And, you know, I had a, I, well, because you don't need to be talking till midnight with some girl, Right? You don't want to be on your phone all day long. Get a life, right? I don't want this phone to control you. There is no reason for you to be alone in your room and this girl to be alone in her room. And you just, like, I, all of these thoughts are going through my head of like, well, but, but why 9 p.m.? I mean, I, I didn't really have a, why 9 p.m.? So I had an option. I could say, well, because I said so, <laughs> right? Well, because I said so. I could, like, ah, forget it. No rules. Who cares? Do whatever, right? Or I could maybe say, I don't know. Let me get back to you on that. I had options in the moment, right? And I know this may sound silly, but that was an um moment for me. I didn't know what to do. My kids were growing up and all these, wait a minute, my rules were good. I, here's what I did. So just rules. I, I gotta, we got to play around with this. we got to have some fun. So mom, dad's parents, kids are going to be like, dude, yes, you're speaking to me, man. Like, take this, parents. Be careful. I'm just telling you right now, kids, be careful. Because this is very much to you as well, okay? So I'm just saving you for some grief, all right? I went online just to see some of our, so we can bask in our collective wisdom, okay? Some of the rules that we have established to make the world a much better place, okay? So let's enjoy some of our collective wisdom. Here's one that I found. No running around the house with your feet covered in yogurt. It's a rule. Somebody established. Moms, dad, you know exactly what was happening in that house when that moment and that rule was established. <laughs> there was a kid running around with their feet covered in yogurt. Anyways, here's another one that was like, oh, yeah, no milking the dog. We needed a rule for that, yeah. And then sub point A was no making your little brother taste dog milk. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Don't slowly sink down into the toilet. <laughs> When you're done going potty, call for mom or wipe yourself and get up. We needed a rule for that. Yeah, that was a rule established. Uh, don't ride in the car with the window down. You could get face paralysis. That's why some guy, some person invented the little lock button on the windows now, you know, because <laughs> they stopped turning the window. Anyways, um, and they made a rule about it. And then here's the final one. And I, I don't know if you've ever said this or not, but you're grounded for the rest of your life. Done. Yep. That's the rule. All right. Checkmate. Beat me now. You know, like rules. How can the world not be a better place? How can our kids not have every answer and be wiser for all, all of the wisdom that we have placed with our rules? I'm tongue in cheek kind of playing with you because yes, am I saying throw out rules? No, I promise I'm not. However, we, we got to be honest. Sometimes our rules don't really point in the right direction. Sometimes our rules can be pretty selfish, and it's just to make my life more convenient and easy. 
sometimes our rules are just dumb. <laughs> sometimes when we go through step one and step two, like maybe we pause and we meet them in need for help, I got some wisdom. What do we do when I've got this wisdom with this, what do I do now? Sometimes our go-to is just to make a rule. Maybe there's a better way, okay? So we've we got to be honest about, hey, maybe we got something to learn here. Um, last week, we talked about wisdom, and wisdom focuses on the future. It allows us to see the future destination, because if I'm too stuck today in this one thing that I'm, or this thing that I'm in, this waves, these things, I can make some really bad decisions, and it won't get me to where I would like to be, my future, where I would love to see. My future self would look back at my current self and say, dummy, don't do that anymore, right? So wisdom allows us to focus on you know, the future destination, and it helps us make wiser decisions today. So here's another thing. Like, uh, the, so we've, we've seen wisdom over the last few weeks. Jesus wants the same thing, and here's how he said it in John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. I come that they may have life, and what kind of life? Go ahead and say it. Yeah, like abundant life. Would you want that? I bet you'd say yes, right? Let me ask you another question. Um, do you believe? Do you believe him? And, and I'll be honest, I, got, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know you personally, so please don't, I mean, take it personally, but don't take it too personally. Like, I, I, it's easy, especially as Christians, to say, oh, yeah, Jesus, oh, yeah, Jesus wants me to have life. I know he wants me to have life. And to cognitively understand that he said those words, and I believe he said those words, but to not believe it not trust it. To know that he said it, I guess he's capable of it, but to actually trust him. Because if I really trusted that he wanted that for me, then I would make decisions based on like, I know he wants what's best for me. But don't we still sometimes struggle thinking that he doesn't want what's best for me? I know what's best for me. Don't we struggle sometimes with this idea, this concept that God is a God of rules? And he's kind of a buzzkill. And I, I know a little bit. I mean, we're, we're, we're more educated now. I know me. I can handle this. I can still do this and still get. I mean, we do that, don't we? We struggle with it. And it's a lie that we've been told, and it's from the very beginning, that God's holding back on you. And so we've got to be honest. Like, maybe we think God's holding back on you. I don't know, but you need to answer that question for yourself. And this isn't just a Christian versus non-Christian. This is every single person needs to ask this because Christians, sometimes we can say it with our words but not live it, not really, oh, wait, no, I don't sometimes. Do we really believe that he's out to give us abundant life or not? And, and, and listen, this is just, why did he create rules, right? Why, why did God even put rules in, in this world if he wants us to have life, right? That just, that's the opposite of life. Well, it's easy to me to understand, like as a parent, um, but I anybody, as a teacher, as a boss, as a, even just as a person, every single person here, you, reckon, you know this is true, that once someone does a certain action, oftentimes it actually restricts your freedom. It destroys, it, it, it limits your potential, your future, not makes it freer. It puts you more in bondage, more at the mercy of others, the decisions that you make today. I mean, think about this. This is just a couple of, you know, illustrations like, you know, smoking. Hey, be, if you're free to smoke, whatever you want to smoke, right? Say you're free to smoke, whatever substance you want to smoke. Go have a conversation with someone who's dying of lung cancer. Think about that. Did it, did it restrict? Did it bring freedom or limit? Or someone who started on something and now they're on a harder substance and now they're, right? Think about that. Like, free to have whatever kind of relationships with whoever you want to have relationships with. Go have a conversation with some people who have experienced what comes from maybe like SCDs or teenagers that got pregnant. And now, guess what? A again, it's not like their life is ruined. It's just, were their freedoms limited or did they have more freedom? There are decisions that once Mark Essek, I, me personally, once I do this, I cannot undo and it doesn't bring me freedom, it limits my freedom. I have fewer choices now. It doesn't ruin the rest of my life necessarily, but it doesn't lead to life. It leads to less freedom. 
But there's this lie that sometimes I begin to believe that I know better and I can get to freedom, this abundant life on my own. So it comes down again, once again, like trust. I, I, here's the question I want you to ask, and I have a feeling I already know your answer. is like, what kind of life do you want? Do you want abundant life? Do you believe it's still possible for you to have a, a, an abundant life? Those around you to have an abundant life. Do you think you can help others around you? Do you want to help others have an abundant life? Then that's what we're talking about. That's what Jesus says he came to give, and that's what wisdom brings. This abundant life. But let me think, think about it like this. If, if you wanted to be a millionaire, right? If you want to be a millionaire one day, then that probably means you need to start learning how to live like one now. And if you go start looking at this and reach, not, not people who were born into the money, but people who earned it, right? You're going to start learning some things about millionaires that you probably didn't know, that they lived like very poor people for a very long time often. They didn't go into major debt. They didn't buy brand new cars and have leases and all this stuff. They lived very differently. They had higher standards for themselves for a very long time so that in the future they could experience the freedom that comes with not being in bondage to debt. You see, we, we like this side of the equation. We like this. <laughs> yeah, I want to experience this. But what you might not realize or didn't think about is they created higher standards in their lives that they didn't have to, but they chose to so they could experience the future that they would, they're hoping for. And we all go, well, duh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, what about with our words and our time and our relationships and our families? How does that not, it's the same thing. Wisdom reminds us that if you want to have this kind of abundant marriage, an abundant relationship with your kids, an abundant relationship with your friends, an abundant freedom and all this kind of life, well then I bet we got to start today and maybe doing something, living a little differently so we can experience that kind of life. So here's our big idea, learn to live it, not lecture it. <laughs> and again, all the kids are like, yeah, mom, take that, dad, no more lecturing. Well, again, I'm just telling you, pause, because this is very much for young people too, all the kids and students in this room. You need to learn to live it, not tell other people how to do it first. But moms and dads, man, we got to learn to live it. And I want to give you some principles on how to do that. we got to learn to live it, not lecture it. Here's a word that I think we need to start kind of using or implementing. It's the word standard. Standards. The word itself just means a level or quality, level of quality or attainment a level of quality or an attainment or attainment. What level of life would you like to have? What level of quality of life would you like to have? And I bet you would say, yeah, I want that abundant thing. Okay, so the million dollars thing, we need to create potentially some standards in our lives so that we can potentially in the future experience the kind of things that come from abundant living. Imagine a standard being like a, like a fence, okay? Every dog park has a fence, right? <laughs> you like dogs? Like, why is there a fence? Well, one, ma, the, the owners of the dog and the dog, you can take the leash off, right? Take the leash off and run, baby. Within this fence, have at it. Heart's content. Go wild. Have fun. Is it meant to restrict their freedom or help them or give them freedom? You can say, well, it's to well, what's on the other side of the fence? Let's say it's a road. Hey, sure, if you want to let your dog go play in the road, go play. Have fun. Go play in the road because you can what's probably going to happen? You see, it actually gives freedom because within this parameter, man, we can have a blast and there's not the consequences that come with when I do this. But you're like, wait a minute, that's restricting me. No, it actually gives life. Here's a, here's a formula that's going to help us because what we, what we can do, what wisdom says, is if you want to learn to live wisdom out in your life so that you can experience more of this abundant living that Jesus wants for you, that wisdom wants for you, then we need to start thinking, creating some standards. And here's a formula to help you practically with that. A biblical command or principle plus sprinkle in wisdom, wisdom. And remember last week we learned those questions, those amazing questions. Uh, what's the wise thing to do? So as we're seeking wisdom, what's the wise thing in light of my past experiences and inclinations, in light of my current situation, and in light of my future hopes and dreams in God's Word, that's wisdom, right, equals a standard. So it's this kind of formula. So now that I'm, I'm collecting, step one, pause and admit, and I've got some wisdom, then I can create a standard. What's the difference between a principle and a command, you ask, okay? Think about road signs, really simple. If you're driving down a country road or any road, right, and there's uh, this thing called a speed limit sign, right? It's got this number on it. Is that a command or a principle? 
<laughs> you act like it's a principle, but is it a command or a principle? It's a command. It's a law. Whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you obey it or not, it is a law. And when the officer pulls you over, you can say all you want. Well, sir, I thought it was more of like, this is more of a 55 road, not a 45, right? You can say whatever you want. He has the right or she has the right to give you a ticket because you broke the law. It was a command. Now, the same road, you go a little farther, you see this curve, right? And you see those little yellow signs, right, with the black curved arrows in them. What does that mean? Sharp curve coming up. And then after that or even before that sign, you see the signs that say slow down. Is that a command or a principle? Well, there is no law that states you have to slow down. You, you don't have to slow down. You can go full speed if you want to, but you may not be here tomorrow <laughs> to experience what it's a, it's a principle, but it's really wise to listen to it. There is a principle and a command. God's got both. He's got principles and commands. So we've got to learn what they are, sprinkle in wisdom, and then we can begin to create some standards in our lives. I think one of those, here's two principles, because sometimes we, we take this little bitty thing, this nugget of truth that we just learned, and then we run with it. So I want to give you some wisdom, especially moms and dads are just adults in the room, but also students and kids, because I'm telling you, you need to learn how to apply this in our own lives. Um, here's two principles. When you want to start creating standards in your life, two principles that are going to give you some wisdom. The first one comes from James chapter 1, verse 22. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. <laughs> We're good at this, man. Like, we love to tell people what to do but not do it ourselves. And uh, point the finger sometimes at believers, Christians. Let's just be honest. Sometimes we can quote all the Scripture. Like, love the Lord your God and love others like Him, but we don't do it. But anybody can be like this. Tell your kids what to do, but don't do it yourself. Tell your parents what to do, but don't do it yourselves. So first principle, kind of give us a guardrail as we're starting to create these principles. Well, hey, make sure you're not just telling people what to do. You're also doing it yourselves. You're living it out, right? That's the first principle that gives you a guardrail on this side. But on the other side, you've got Proverbs 19 too that says, desire without knowledge is not good. Whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. So this is, I had a family when I was in Kentucky, and this is a long time ago. There's this family, kind of new believers. And um, anyways, uh, the kids came one day, and they're like super mad at their mom. <laughs> like, anyways, just, they're mad at their mom, like irate. And uh, the story, anyways, ends up being mom had read an article online. She was reading an article, and when she read this article, then she <laughs> immediately got all of the Harry Potter books in their house, put them in, and burned them, <laughs> torched them, like done. And later, the kids were like, I can't believe it. Why did she burn our books? We love this book, blah, 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 blah. I'm not making a point about Harry Potter for or against. Trust me on this. this listen, here's the point. It's that back then there was this brand new website called Babylon B. <laughs> and that's where she read the article. If you don't know what that is, it's a satirical website. It's not fact. It's like it was making fun of all the misinformation that is out about that author and then expanding upon it. And, make, and she didn't know that, but she was a brand new believer wanting to, oh man, I don't want my kids to get it. I, don't, I want to help my kids out. And so she had good intentions, just poor execution. Like, oh, maybe should have paused on that, you know, because of that one article, right? Have you ever like made rules? Like, oh, I should have thought through that one a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah. So have you broken either one of those principles? And you're like, no, nah, no, well, I'm sorry, but I'm here to point myself out and you as well. So, like, you ever heard something like this? Don't you yell at your mother. I'm the only one that's allowed to yell in this house. Ooh, yeah. You just broke that principle. Hey, kids, I told you it's coming at you. You love to call mom and dad on everything they do wrong, right? When they mess up, when they said that they were going to do something. And you love to point your friends out, call your teachers out, call everybody out. What if you get called out? Ooh. All of a sudden, it's not fair, is it? You make a rule like, hey, no more talking this entire trip. And then your kid pees all over the car. <laughs> I couldn't ask to stop. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that one through. Like, we just do things sometimes. There's your two kind of guardrails to help you as you start creating standards. Hey, listen, best intentions, hasty, pause. But also, don't just be telling people what to do and not doing it yourself. Because we can live, man, we've all experienced both of those. So how do we start creating? And I'll give you just an example in my own personal life. Like Cindy and I, when we were early in marriage, you know, oftentimes she would ask me lots of questions about where I'd been, who I was with, how long I was there, what did we do, what did we talk about, all these kinds of questions. And I started to kind of feel like, do you not trust me? 
Like, why, why are you asking me all these questions? I feel like I'm, I'm getting, like, grilled here. <laughs> like the light and the cop. Like, did I do something wrong? And she just it would question me a lot. And so, honestly, we would get in arguments. Why don't you trust me? Well, what are you hiding? <laughs> like, why aren't you answering me these questions? Like, where is that going to go? Yeah, more fighting. And then this, this thing smacked me in the face, this, this step, this principle. Like, oh, wait a minute. I want my life, I, mean, I want my wife to experience abundant life. I want that for her. I want her to have 100% trust, 100% abundant life. I want that for her. I did. And I started realizing, oh, wait a minute, I can do something to help with that. So I can create some standards in my own life. Not because I have to, but because I want to. So I created the simple standard. I'm around people all the time. I'm around men, women, old, young. I mean, I'm just around people all the time. And so I was like, you know what, I'll just, I'll never be alone with a woman. Especially in a, you know, I mean, you know, in a closed space of any kind. I just won't be alone with a woman. And you're like, that's, you don't, Mark, there's nothing wrong with being alone in a space with a woman. I'm not saying there is or there isn't. What I am saying is that, you know what, for me, that's a standard I'm totally 100% happy for because you know what? That gives my wife, holy cow, amazing freedom to know she's never going to get that phone call from me. Hey, babe, I need to tell you something. I want her to be free. So, is my freedom that I want to do something at the expense of her freedom? My kids, like, you know, hey, listen, you know, here, here's the deal, kids. I, I am not perfect. I'm a dummy. I do all kinds of, but I, here's, I'm not going to yell at you. I won't yell at you. And I won't punish you out of anger. It's just a standard. Are you saying that you can't, yeah, you can say that. You can do that. Does that mean, come on, read into it. That meant I probably yelled at my kids and at some point, <laughs> to tell myself I need to create standard, and I probably disciplined out of anger, I made a dumb rule just because I was mad to make my life happier, easier. So I started making, like, we started making for our family, like, okay, you know what, every night of the week I will not be out. We will have at least two or three nights together so that we could have family time. Standards of my own personal life. You know what? I've, I've always spent time with God's Word, but now, no, it's a standard. I will, spend every, I will spend time with God every day, at least five days a week. I don't know. I just, standards. These little things. And it's like this beautiful fence around the abundant life that I, you, you can experience. And again, you look at it and you say, well, you don't, those are rules. That you, well, I guess you can look at it as a rule, but also it's a place in which that I can go at it, man. Within this, I got nothing to worry about. I got no guilt within this. I've got nothing to explain within this. My wife and my kids, you know what they begin to experience? My wife felt freer than ever. I felt freer than ever. I didn't feel like I'm a, on a chain. I felt free. My wife felt free. My kids began to see it in our lives, not just hear it from us. We experienced an abundant life that wisdom brought into our lives. Not me. I'm a dummy like anybody else. But we began to allow wisdom to come in, and it brought with it better life. What kind of life do you want? The big idea is simple. You've got to learn to live it, not lecture it. Again, I told you, it's not about parents and kids. It's every single one of us, because we all love to make rules. We like to make rules in our workplaces, with our friendships, with our parents, with our everywhere. We just like to say things and say, oh, that's going to take care of it. But that's not wise all the time. The first thing is, do I even know how to live out wisdom in, all, in my life? Do I really want it? Am I willing to live out wisdom in my life? Here's what I want to do. I want to give you a few areas where I think everybody probably needs to have or think about having standards in, in these areas in your life, and then give you some very simple, practical, how you can use this formula so that you can this week begin doing this on your own. Again, your choice is, are you going to implement it or not? I can't force you. All I can do is give you some great stuff that it's, it's wise stuff, and then you can choose what you're going to do with it. Physical relationships. We should come up with standards within our physical relationships, okay? So so that formula, biblical principle or command plus wisdom equals standard. So one biblical command that you can look in Hebrews 13, 4 says marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So sex outside of a marriage, immoral. So 
sprinkle in some wisdom. That's a command, not a principle. So sprinkle in wisdom, like maybe you have past relationships that you have to deal with. Sprinkle in, you know that you get connected relationally, emotionally, very quickly. You know maybe that when you're around a group of people, like there's 10 of you, it's probably less. You don't really, you know, it's less likely to fall into temptation. Or maybe when you're around a guy or a girl that have the same values as you, it's easier. But when you have someone that may have different thoughts, different values, it makes it more difficult because maybe they pressure you. So sprinkle in some wisdom. And what are some standards that you could create? So maybe as a single person, you say, I will not be alone. Maybe I'll, we'll go out together as a group. Simple standard, maybe. Maybe that's wise for you. Um, Regardless if you're single or not, maybe you say that I won't date, especially single, I won't date someone who's not a believer, a Christian, holds the same values. On the front end, rather than waiting two months in to find out, and now you're emotionally invested and connected, right? You just make a standard right there. Regardless of your marital situation, you could say, I won't go to clubs and bars where people will pressure me or Things will happen that maybe will elicit temptation. Um, I won't scan the internet when I'm alone and restless. Find something else to do. I will remove programs or devices or apps that, I will cont- that I c- I've continually given into. Um, I'll have someone ask me every week, have you watched or listened to anything you know you shouldn't have? Like, these are simple things that you could put into your life and you say, I don't want to because that's fine. You can play on the road as much as you would like to, but also understand what comes with that. There are consequences to the decisions that we make. What about friendships? A biblical principle, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, do not be misled. Bad crump company corrupts good character. Listen, I don't know what you've heard or come to believe. It's just a true statement. Who you choose to spend the majority of your time with will in a large part determine the course and outcome of your life. Doesn't mean you can't hang out with people. It just means that you have to understand this, wrestle with it. People influence you. So be wise about who and what you do with those people. Wisdom, then, sprinkle in some wisdom. You know that you're probably going to make friends with where you work, play, or live, or go to school, team, sports. You'll probably find friends from there. You're probably going to want to do things that your friends like to do, right? So what kinds of things do they like? So sprinkle some wisdom in there. Maybe you're lonely. Maybe you feel like you don't have any friends, and you know that you really want friends. Whatever your current situation, your future is, you sprinkle in some wisdom. And then maybe some standards like this. Maybe you're just going to make sure that you're going to always have people around you in your friend circle, close friend circle, that are a little further along in their Christian faith than you. You're still going to hang out with all kinds of people, but also make sure you're being intentional about putting people in your life that, that do hold to a higher standard so that you know you're not on your own over there. Maybe communicate to all your friends that you are a Christian and what your values are instead of just assuming they know or being embarrassed by it. Maybe a standard as simple as this, I will not sin to keep or get friends. What about drugs and drinking? Biblical command, do not get drunk. This is Ephesians 5.18. Do not get drunk on wine. You probably add whiskey, beer, weed, whatever intoxicants that can uh, take away your uh, control, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. That's a command. Not that you can't partake, but don't go too far, right? That's a command. So sprinkle in some wisdom. You know your past proclivities towards whatever jo- drug or substance of choice. Or when you're around certain people, whatever, right? You know these things. You also know wisdom. So it's like when I lose control, like bad things happen around the people around me. So what are some standards that you could create? Maybe you'll not sit around in a bar for entertainment all day. Like maybe that's not the place you go for entertainment. Maybe find some other places if that's a struggle for you. I will only have a certain amount of alcohol in the house. I will not drink alone. I will find someone to ask me every week, have you been drunk or given in to whatever substance you tend to give in to? You talk about money, like the biblical principles of being a wise manager of God's resources that He's given you. Don't give in to excessive debt and gambling and theft and all these ways to get more stuff but puts you in a bad situation those around you. So you can enjoy the freedom that comes with not being enslaved, right? And again, like right now, you may be thinking like, dude, this is too much. This is prudish. You're joking me. Making all these, I I don't care. I can be honest with you. Like, it's a choice. What kind of life do you want? What kind of life do you want for your family? What kind of life do you want for your friends? Because I'm not a good friend if I lead my friends to destruction. And my friends are not good friends if they lead me to destruction. And I don't want to lead them to destruction. But if I'm not 
careful, I am, because today I'm making decisions that affect tomorrow. And we just know that. So wisdom sets us up for what's next. Wisdom sets us up for a better life. The choice is, do you want it? Are you willing to live out wisdom? What I can tell you from my own, I know that I think our future selves sometimes will look back at our current selves and say, trust me, it's not too much. Please. Or they look back and say, thank you so much for making those decisions now because they're experiencing that abundant life that comes with wisdom that Jesus wants for you. I, my own personal life, listen, I, we still have our moments, but they're a lot less than they used to be. Cindy and I are in a lot better place than we've ever, and it's not because we're different or we, it's, it's wisdom. It works. It works. Do my kids always? No, they make mistakes, but goal as a parent is no longer that I show them how to live out by making every rule for them as they get older. It's to prepare them so that they can make wise decisions on their own. They know how to create godly standards in their own life. That's the goal. Wisdom sets us up for the future, not just for answers, a solution, a problem today. And sometimes we make decisions that make our lives easier, but they're not helping those around us. What kind of life do you want? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, there's going to be, a, we're going to sing a song, and then there's going to be some music being played, and like, this is a time for you to respond, whether you're at home, online, or here in person, like, to re- respond. What, what do you want to do with what you've learned or what you've heard today? Do you think that God's out to get you? Or do you think he's got something for you? Who are you going to trust? Are you going to go after? Are you willing to go after wisdom and implement it in your life? If for the first time you want to talk to someone about saying yes to Jesus or just who Jesus is, maybe like I want to know what it means to forgive, to ask Jesus to come to my life as my Lord and Savior, like text us, email us your name. The information will be on the screen. Or if you're here in person, you can come up to the front. Some of our friends will be here. You can have a conversation with them. Or go to the point in the lobby after the service. Like we want to help you take that next step so that you can, what what is that next step? Anyways, we want to pray for you if you need prayer. If you're a believer in the room, another way to connect with God or draw near to Him is through communion. Right? This is God created an amazing standard for his love, and he demonstrated it for us on the cross. And so each week we take communion. When you came in, you got those little cups. You can open up both flaps. Pro tip is to open up the bread first, right? So open up the bread, then the juice. And then here in a few moments, this is a moment to remember what he did and then once again leave committed to live like him to the world around us. Do you want to experience abundant life? Do you still believe God wants that for you? Or would you be willing to start believing what if he does? Then this week, start implementing some standards, implementing wisdom in your life. I guarantee you, you're going to be a beneficiary if you do, and those around you. Let's pray. And during this prayer, I encourage you to pray along with me, man, because God's listening. Hey, God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for demonstrating what your love looks like through Jesus Christ, ultimately. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the guidance that you've given us. Thank you for being who you are and calling us to a... May you want something better for us. God, we, we confess or commit or, 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 or repent or we just we admit that, man, we, we make bad decisions sometimes. We do things that are just rebellious or stubborn. And so, God, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing them to you, and I pray that we are bringing them to you. But also I'm praying that there's some people here listening today that maybe for the first time will say, God, I want to begin to trust you and stop trusting all the other things that I've trusted. I'm going to trust you. And there's some people watching or listening to this and like, you know what? I've said yes to you a long time ago, but if I'm honest, I know that I haven't been trusting you in all these little things in my life. And I pray that we begin to live wisdom out in our lives. Experience the life that comes with it. It'll change things, man. So it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Would you please stand and sing this last song with us today? All throughout my history Your faithfulness has walked beside me The winter storms made way for spring In every season from where I'm 
I'm standing I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life All over my life I see the promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life Help me remember when I'm weak The fear may come, the fear may leave You lead my heart to victory You are my strength And you always will be I see All over my life All over my life I see the promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life See the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless all my sin roll away Because of you, oh Jesus See the cross, the empty grave The evidence is endless All my sin roll away Because of you, oh Jesus I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life All over my life I see the promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life I see the evidence of the goodness All over my life all over my life I see the promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life So why should I fear The evidence is here so why should I fear The evidence is here It's great to see you all today, South Point. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. father will be able to watch Kim Potter's trial before being called as a witness. A black family's home was shot up on Halloween in Michigan and Kyle Rittenhouse found not guilty on all charges. The uncle of African American Jacob Blake was angry after the verdict was read. When you have the, the guy who's presiding over the whole thing puts his hands on the scale and allows this young man literally to walk out, he gave him a pay. The crowd of BLM and pro-Rittenhouse protesters had been growing every day outside the courthouse. Kenosha is still recovering from the summer of 2020 when demonstrators flooded the town after the police shooting of Jacob Blake that ended with fires, looting, and ultimately the Rittenhouse shooting. A judge rejects a request to step down from the case involving African-American Markeith Lloyd, 
The Black Information Network's Terry McCready reports. Here's what that school board member wants, criminal prosecution. This after a young adult memoir for queer boys appeared on school library shelves. CNN reported that Jill Woolbright, who is a member of the Flagler County School Board, filed a report with the county sheriff's office. Woolbright claimed that having the book titled All Boys Aren't Blue in the district's library is a crime, according to CNN. She believes whoever is responsible for allowing the books into the Flagler Flagler County School District should be held accountable. I'm Terry McCready on the Black Information Network. There are recalls on just about anything. Well, now add marijuana to that list. In Michigan, the state's regulatory agency has issued a health and safety bulletin for many products tested at Veritas Laboratories. The Detroit Free Press reported the agency has identified results of all marijuana products tested there to be unreliable. It's important to note that inhalable marijuana concentrate and live resin are not on the list. Veritas Lab rep said they are are working with officials to resolve the issue. There are two facilities, Bay City and Lansing. A North Carolina African-American man who raised dogs for sport over a three-year period at his home in Concord is now headed to federal prison. The Black Information Network's Morgan Wood has the details. That man, Delonte Moore, will now serve more than six years behind bars after a federal judge sentenced him for dogfighting and weapons charges. Sheriff's deputies arrested Moore and seized 14 Rottweilers and pit bull type dogs from a home along with tools used in training the animals to fight. Evidence of Moore's crimes were produced from a seized phone that showed video of dog fights. On the phone, Moore's voice could be heard in the background. I'm Morgan Wood on the Black Information Network. Many of you have been tested for COVID-19 and found the experience a little uncomfortable. Questions are beginning to surface for some if they say the swab needs to go that far up your nose. The New York Times reported that one Canadian said it felt like a painful poke to his brain and a French woman said she suffered a severe nosebleed. The paper notes people can be assured the swabs are not going to puncture your brain. The deep nose swab has been proven effective when testing for SARS and influenza. Many health experts are in agreement that the deep nasal test is the most accurate. I'm Doug Davis along with Esther Dillard on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. The source for black news. The Black Information Network. Detroit's BIN 1130. Your money on the Black Information Network. Gas prices are ticking higher again. The AAA national average price for regular is up a tenth of a cent to nearly 3.41 and a half a gallon. The price is still a few tenths lower than a week ago. As for why gas prices have been so high, AAA spokesman Clay Ingram says there are a few things to blame, beginning with the increase of global consumer demand. OPEC cutting back their production over the last few months in an attempt to push prices upward. Then we had that hurricane along the Gulf Coast area that shut down some of the infrastructure for a few weeks. Nothing major. In addition to that, we saw a smaller pipeline that runs up the East Coast that shut down for a couple weeks. Again, nothing major. But all those factors combined caused our inventories around the country to decrease a little bit. Abram says consumers have two very powerful tools to put downward pressure on gas prices. One is fuel conservation. The other one is price shop. We're more concerned on getting in and out of the station quickly. The White House expects President Biden to make a decision about who runs the Federal Reserve soon. Press Secretary Jen Psaki stepped around numerous questions during her daily briefing and stuck with before Thanksgiving. Fed Chair Jerome Powell's term expires in February. Money news at 24 and 54 minutes past each hour. I'm Julius White on the Black Information Network. Black news all day, every day. The power of information. Detroit's BIN 1130. I'm Doug Davis. And I'm Esther Dillard on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network. Here are your top stories. African-American Dante Wright's father will be able to watch Kim Potter's trial before being called as a witness. A black family's home was shot up on Halloween in Michigan, and Kyle Rittenhouse found not guilty on all charges. The uncle of African-American Jacob Blake was angry after the verdict was read. When you have the, the guy who's presiding over the whole thing puts his hands on the scale, this young man literally walked out. He gave him a pass. The crowd of BLT.